Hello there. Welcome. Great to have you with us once again. It is Faith Matters, and you know what that means. Another 30 minutes in the Word of God together. That's right. It is so exciting for us to be able to take the truth of God's Word, bring it across to you, and we believe that the Holy Spirit is bringing it in a way that you can honestly understand it and apply it to your lives because we live in victory by the amount of Word that becomes alive inside of us and that we live out. Jen, you know, we've been on a journey so far, and that's what we've been doing. We've been getting the Word of God inside of us. It's growing each and every program as we've spent these past few weeks looking at the basic foundational doctrines of our faith. Mm. In other words, once you're born again, what does that mean? What what do I need to believe in? How do I grow in my walk with the Lord? That has really been our topic, our subject over these past few weeks. And it's been many weeks we're on it. And you know what? We're not finished yet. No, far from it. (laughs) Because today we're going to go just another step. And I really hope that you're taking notes. I really believe that you're growing with us all across the nations of the world. If you've missed any programs, please go uh, visit uh, the Apple Store, visit the Google Store, download the app Mm -hmm. Faith Broadcasting Network. A great app for you to download. And you know what? You can watch every one of the programs you've missed. You can get all of the content Mm -hmm. and you can review the subject matter of what we've delivered and shared with you. So a great way for you to be able to do that. My Faith, uh, Faith Broadcasting Network. Uh, is the place for you to download that app. And then don't forget, please send us an email at fm at myfaithtv.com, fm at myfaithtv.com for any questions or if you'd like to be added to our daily devotion and testimonies. Mm -hmm. We've we've received so many testimonies concerning this very, um, the series that we've been going on concerning the principle, the basic principles that are founded in the Word of God and what a blessing it is to receive them, to know that it's become revelation truth to you. Because remember, it doesn't matter how long you have known the Lord for, how long you've walked your journey of faith. These are the principles that will keep you grounded and rooted and anchored in truth so that faith can abound in you and you can live in victory. And so we so uh, enjoy and appreciate those testimonies. Keep them coming. Let us know what God is doing in your life as His Word has become revelational truth to you. That's right. So get your Bibles, pens and notebooks. We are on for a journey today. And uh, we're going to get straight into the Word of the Lord because we're going on today as we deal with an understanding of our inheritance in God. Wow, Jen, I'm ready for this. I'm ready to get straight into the Word of the Lord. I know each and every one of you are ready. And we're talking here about our inheritance with God. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a rightful inheritance. Just much like uh, my children have an inheritance from you and I, all that God has done in our lives. If anything happens to us one day and we go to be with Jesus, they will receive everything that is ours. It is their rightful inheritance. Now, here's the thing. If we had an adopted child, uh, which we don't, but many people do have, or maybe you were adopted wherever you are, I want you to understand something. As an adopted son, as an adopted daughter, you have the equal rightful inheritance as your brother or sister. And you might say, well, that's my half brother, half sister. No, no. You are totally, completely committed into this thing. When your adoption papers are signed and you are adopted, you have the right and the benefit for everything of your mom and dad. You just were not born of their blood. You just might not have been born of their flesh. But you know what? Once that paperwork is grafted and signed, you are 100% legally theirs. No one can say any longer that you were adopted. Now, when we get into the Word of God, that's exactly the same thing. Where, where, where Jesus paid the price on Calvary for us. We were living in a world of sin and slavery. When we bowed our knee to Jesus and we asked Jesus into our heart, 
we were adopted, we were grafted into the vine, we became an heir, a rightful heir to everything that, he, that God has, that, that God is, that God owns, that our daddy owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You're a massive farmer. You've got a lot of cows, all right? Because you are a son. You're an heir to everything. And that's what I want you to understand. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today, our inheritance with God. So wherever you are right now, I want you to shout out. I want you to say, I am a child of God, mm. I am legally entitled to my inheritance. All right, there is an inheritance for you. And because you're a child of God, you are legally entitled to it. Jen, let's talk about that today. The exciting part of this is that your inheritance is not something that you only receive when you leave this earth and go to heaven. You received your inheritance the moment you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart. Now, the Word of God says that we qualify to be called. Remember what That's you right. said? In order to receive or legally receive the inheritance that we have in God, we have to understand, number one, that we are children of God. Well, let's make that point number one. Yes. All right. We are children of God. And let's go to the Word and to show go. exactly what that says. In John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, But as many as received Him, being Jesus, to them... He gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in His name. You receive Jesus, you believe in His name, you are a child of God. Galatians 3, 26, if, uh, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Your inheritance is something that you receive by faith. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. Awesome. Now there's another scripture, Galatians 4, 7 says, So you are no longer a slave, but a son. Mm. And since you are a son, God has made you also an, an heir. An heir, hallelujah. An heir, all right. You are an heir to everything that God has. This is what we're wanting you to know today. You see, in order to continue on your journey, in order to grow in the Word of God, these are basic truths, Jen, that we need to understand. Because if we don't understand who we are in Christ, if we don't understand we are an heir, then we will never be able to step no. into more that God has for no. us. That, that's the problem that we sit And with. that's why the word says that we mm. perish through a lack of knowledge. If you, if you don't understand what you have been given because of what Jesus did for you, you'll never be, be able to enjoy that that's inheritance. Right. Uh, we tell that story all the time. Maybe you must tell it again about that person who won uh, or who was given a passage onto a ship yeah. and all expenses paid. They were given that um, certificate, that ticket. They, they won a trip. They yeah. won a trip. They could get on that ship and they could enjoy the full benefits of that ship. But in their own ignorance, they thought that it only gave them right of passage. It didn't give them all the benefits of the food and the luxuries and, and all the services that were available to them on that ship. So they spent the whole time of their journey, you know, just rationing themselves on what they had brought to eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they never partook of any of those luxuries and free services that were there. So they didn't even get to enjoy that trip to the full extent that they could. And at the end, they only realized, oh, everything was included. <laughs> everything was included. <laughs> and they missed out. And we want you to understand that if you understand what the Word of God says, you can have because you are a son or daughter of the Most High God, that the price Jesus paid for you, it includes so much more to life and fullness of life yeah. than what you could imagine. But the only way you will know that is if you find out what the Word says. That's right. Well, the Word speaks to us so strongly. Romans 8, 17 says, Now if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Yes. Do you remember where the scripture speaks to us and says, where Jesus says, I'm seated at the right hand of the Father. And when you become a child of God, you take a seat next to Him. Right. You are in that right place. And we actually, place. we're going to get into yeah, that you, too. You, you, that is what you need to understand. Uh, you have rightful claim to every single thing that God has done for you, paid for you on the cross of Hallelujah. Calvary. That's the good news Hallelujah. today. You are an heir. In fact, if you wanted to know what exactly is my inheritance, we're going to go step for step into that. But understand this, 
whatever Jesus was given, whatever Jesus inherited from his father, and the word is full of that, yeah. that is rightfully ours too. That's right. That's we right. are joint heir with Jesus, an equal heir with Jesus. That's what it means. So let's answer, Jen, then the, the second part. What is our inheritance? Yes. What actually is it? If I know I'm a joint heir, if I know that that I am uh, qualified because of my salvation to be able to receive everything that God has for me, then what is that inheritance? Well, Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 14 right through to verse 21 kind of speaks about our inheritance. You will find that in the New Testament, you can go right through that New Testament mm. and again and again and again, you begin to understand what is yours in Christ Jesus. But let's look at what Ephesians chapter 1 verse 14 through to 21 speaks about. And the very first thing, and I believe that this is what our inheritance is actually completely wrapped up in. And that is the person of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He is our inheritance. In fact, in verse 14 it says, The Spirit, the Holy Spirit is, number one, the guarantee of our inheritance. And number two, it is through Him that we acquire and complete and possess our inheritance. So it's all wrapped up in knowing there is and, and having the person of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. He is our guarantee that we have it and He is the way that we can actually possess that inheritance mm. now while we are here on earth. That's right. You know, when you understand that and you realize that all of this is about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives us something, a spirit of wisdom, and revelation to know God. That's right. All right, I want you to understand that because everything is consumed, everything is wrapped up in what we're teaching over here. And so when the when you realize that 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 it's, it's all wrapped up in the person of the Holy Spirit, when you get to know the person of the Holy Spirit, you get to know God. Yes. And 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 it's almost like a child would get to know his father and know that his father always wants to you know, do him good, always give him everything he can, always spoil him, always look after him. That's the exact same thing that the Holy Spirit does for wow. you in understanding God. Wow. You can really get to know God now yeah. because of the because Holy Spirit. That Holy is Spirit. part of your inheritance. Yeah. Now, a way to know and understand as well the hope we have in Him. All right, so again, the Holy Spirit comes and speaks to you and, and you begin to understand and you begin to know the, that there is a hope that we have in Him. All right, I, I want you to understand this so clearly that your hope doesn't come from anything else, but it comes from knowing who God is yes. in your life. Doesn't the word say that yeah. Christ in us is the hope, hope of glory. glory that's right we have a sure hope in christ jesus the holy spirit makes christ alive to us real to us and we can tangibly feel and know every part of of him that's what it says in the word it speaks in in, in corinthians it speaks about how only the spirit of god knows the depths of god the full extent of who he is right and he reveals that to us yeah the same spirit that knows everything about god lives on the inside of us and he promises to reveal that to us and there is a sure hope that we have in god it's not just a hope that when we leave this place we go to be with him and eternally you know for, for eternity it's a hope that we can have right now we can live in that right now mm. it's so awesome jen you, you know there's nothing like living in his presence and in that hope because it suddenly makes life worth living and I, I want to speak to you there for a moment because maybe you've you've kind of got to the place in your life where you you you, you wonder is there reason to live is there uh, you, you know the frustrations of the world uh, the difficulties that you face maybe through a medical condition or maybe through a financial dilemma that you're facing or a, a family attack or an abuse that you've taken on your life one way or the other I want you to understand when you get to know God and as a born again believer, your hope is in Him. That's where your hope is. Everything about who you are 
is wrapped up in your knowledge of knowing Him. Mm -hmm. And that's the beautiful thing mm -hmm. about it. It is stunning. In fact, another thing that is part of your inheritance, not just to know God, not just to know the hope that you have in Him, but also to know and understand, listen to this, the immeasurable, the unlimited, mm. and the surpassing greatness of His power that is in us and is for us who believe. And it's demonstrated, it's shown out in the working of His mighty strength in us. The very same power that raised Christ from the dead is alive on the inside of us. This is part of the inheritance that we have in Christ Jesus. Yeah. The power of God. Yeah. The, and it says it's unlimited <laughs> and it is immeasurable. You cannot, there is no limit to it. You can never measure it, but that alive power is on the inside of us. That no matter what we face in this life, there is an inner strength that we can tap into, an inner wisdom, a power that makes the impossible possible is already on the inside of us. Isn't this awesome? It's amazing. It's accessible to us. It's at work in us. And it is for us to live in the victory that we can have in Christ Jesus. This is part of of our inheritance. That's right, Jim. I mean, it's just such a great place to be. You see, the more you get into the Word of the Lord, the more you understand this, the more it becomes a reality to you and you know your rightful place. I'm an heir. I'm in that position of receiving all that He has for us. And there's where it speaks again, that same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead and seated Him in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. So again, we're reiterating the fact that, that Jesus has paid the price. He's demonstrated it. He's already showed his, his power through the fact that He rose from the dead, which gives you the right of victory, which gives you the right of a conquering spirit, which gives you the right of being able to overcome, to, to overcome every yes. situation and every dark thing that would come across your path. Listen to me. Don't sit there any longer and say, I can't do this. You can. Don't, don't be in a place of hopelessness. No, no. Don't look at where you are now. That's good. Look at what the Word of God says about you. Mm -hmm. You see, there's a big difference. If you measure your life and if you look at everything with where you are right now, uh, it might look hopeless. But you shouldn't be looking through eyes in the natural. You should be looking through eyes in the supernatural in knowing there's a big God inside of you, Hallelujah. living on the inside of you. That, 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 that is the message of hope. Mm -hmm. That is the message of strength. That is the message of, 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 of who we are in our walk with God and Christ Jesus and having Him live on the inside of us. Because now, understand this, it's no longer just you alone. It's you and Him together. Hallelujah. Seated at the right hand of the Father something big, something powerful, Jen, to understand. Do you know when we spoke, and I love what you just said now again, that when you find yourself in a, a position where you feel that you are hopeless, yeah. I want to remind you, that scripture that we told you about is that our hope is not in ourselves. Mm. It just, it isn't. We will never be able to do anything uh, that relates to continuous victory on our own. That's, yeah, that's yeah. not it. In fact, that's why our inheritance is wrapped up in the Holy Spirit. It's that power that's in us. But remember that scripture that we just, we alluded to, well, that we spoke about that said that Christ in us is our hope of glory. So your hope is not going to be in yourself, but it's going to be in the hope of glory. What does that word glory mean? Mm. That word glory means the weightiness and the fullness of everything that makes God, God. He is almighty. He is all knowing. He is everywhere. He is all sufficient. He is everything we will ever need. That is his glory. It's his fullness. It's his supernatural power and ability. Everything that makes God God in his glory is what we have living on the inside of us. It is the hope that we have is that His glory is more than enough for That's us. Right. It is everything we will need for us. And when we learn to place our hope in that and not in ourselves 
and not in our circumstances, but knowing that that is our rightful inheritance, to have a hope in the glory that is living in Christ Jesus that is inside of you. That's where we put our focus. So when calamity comes, what is our place? What, what is our responsibility? Mm. It's to put our hope in the glory of God that already exists in us. It's already at work in us and for us. Yeah. And when you, you mentioned many times, Andre, about how we seated at the right hand, hand of the Father, and I know we're going to go into depth in that mm. uh, coming up now, but, but understand He has given us His name. Do you remember what happened after Jesus conquered death? And he annihilated anything that the enemy could ever have over us. He conquered sin and broke its power over our lives. And then God took Jesus. In mm. fact, the power of the Holy Spirit that actually raised Jesus out of death and put him at the right hand of the Father. That same spirit lives in us too. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the word says that Jesus was seated in heavenly places with God at the right hand of the Father. And God gave him the name that is above every other name. A name that everything has to bow to. It's a name of authority that is higher than anything that could ever oppose it. And Jesus said that he's given us his name. That is part of your inheritance. Mm. You have received that name that is higher than any other name. You have received the name of Jesus Christ that is already victorious over everything. That is the authority and the victory that you have already received as your inheritance. It's the name, access to the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. Jen, that's why the word victory is just such a powerful word. Why? Because you are victorious. It's a done deal. It's done. It's paid for the it's same way inheritance. that Jesus was victorious. Over you are things. victorious. Amen. Far above Amen. any other authority, power, dominion above every other name the name of jesus Hallelujah. is the highest source Hallelujah. of power and you know what praise the lord that power lives inside of you Hallelujah. when you understand that and when you come to realize all of this you begin to answer your own questions you begin to understand what your rightful inheritance is so what's left for us to do walk in it yes what's left for us to do take up the challenge what's left for us to do something yep. anything Amen. better than what you're doing right now because use the name of Jesus use the power of that name use who he is on the inside of you and and I want to challenge you you will become victorious because that's what the word of God says and it has everything to do with the Holy Spirit on yeah. the inside of us this walk of faith that we have is not trying to find the strength in ourselves. It's not trying to dig deep and find something to hold on to. No, it is a total, complete dependency on God who lives on the inside of you. It's a complete surrender. It's saying, Lord, not my strength. I've come to the end of myself. I don't put trust in anything that is me, but I put my complete trust, I completely lean on, depend on, find myself in you. You are my strength. You are everything I need. You are my provider. You are my wisdom. You are the source of life itself. And I depend on you. And when you begin to understand that, you'll realize that that supernatural inner strength, it infuses you with everything you need to live victoriously. Don't ever rely on yourselves. That's what it says in Proverbs. It says, lean not on your own understanding, but entirely, you can entirely depend on Him. When we learn, from the moment we wake up in the morning to yield ourselves completely to Him, that we're completely aware of His truth on the inside of us, that we are constantly speaking to Him, constantly listening to Him. Do you know that becomes who you are? You become, it is in, in Him we live and move and have our being, an inseparable connection 
with the Holy Spirit is what we need to walk in the inheritance that we have in Christ Jesus. It's not of yourself. It'll never have anything to do with you, but have everything to do with who is living on the inside of you. Dear Pastor Andre and Jenny, you guys are doing great things around the world through this ministry. I am particularly blessed by your relationship as husband and wife. Lastly, your new book on Living For is really inspiring. I look forward to having a copy in my library. Thank you and God bless. Hi, Pastor. I thank God for the educational show. You are really a blessing to us. We are learning a lot. May the Lord continue to bless you. Well, what a time we've had today. I trust you've been blessed. I trust you've got something out of that. I trust that you have grown in understanding your rightful inheritance. Jen, what a great time it was. It's so exciting. There is, there is nothing more wonderful than knowing the truth of God concerning you and what He's done for you. That's right. Now listen, get us those emails. Get us those emails, fm at myfaithtv.com. All right, we want to hear from you wherever you are in the whole wide world. Send us an email if you'd like to get our daily devotion. It goes out every single day in an email form. You can get an email in your inbox, beautiful daily devotion that you can read and grow in the Word of God in these very issues that we've just spoken about, the message of faith. And uh, we're excited about that. So I want to really encourage you to uh, receive our daily email. Please just go into the, 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 the column right there and uh, or in the subject line, send us an email and put daily devotions, please. And we'll get you added to the daily devotional list. All right, that you can receive that daily devotional every single day. Now we are on a journey and we are going to where God wants us to go. So I want you to come with us each and every week. Set your calendar, set your reminders. Set everything that you can join us each and every week as we go on this journey further and further to grow and understand the Word of the Lord. We love you. We appreciate you. What a great time we've had today. And I know that we've grown together in the Word of God like never before. So thank you for being with us. Thank you for being a part with us. And we're excited about what God's going to do even next week. So from the Faith Matters studio, uh, we, we just want to tell you, thank you for your partnership. Thank yes. you for your love. Thank you for those emails and those letters and your support to this great work of uh, Faith Matters right here in our studio. So we love you. God bless you and keep growing in the word of the Lord. Now, don't forget quickly before we go, remember we're up to 30 minutes a day of word time. All right, 30 minutes a day. That's the challenge. All right, don't slip up. <laughs> keep it going. Keep it going. If you've taken that 30, day, 30 minutes a day challenge, shoot us an email. Say, I've taken the challenge. Let us know. Testify. Tell us as well how good is it going and what's happening on your journey with 30 minutes a day in the Word of God. We love you. All our contact details are on the end of the screen. God bless you.